Hey gang, it's been about a week. Let's take a look at the progress here. First of all, got the main highway going all the way around. Put in one lane the hard way and then use the parallel road tool from Network Multi-Tool to put in the other lane. It chose to put a tunnel through this hill and this little hill over here. I think they're quaint, they had character. I'm keeping them. Everywhere else, where you didn't see a road earlier, that was a bridge. Up here, we have a candidate for an airport area. We have the passenger rail coming in at this point. It's relatively flat, not entirely, but relatively so. And it's got a good prevailing wind going this east-west direction, coming right down from that valley into here. That will allow me to have runways that go east-west and not have to wrestle with any traffic problems there. Next thing I did was I got this park area ready to go. We have a road that goes under the base of it and you can tell that there's a road right here next to it. They're gonna meet up or curve around, something like that. But this area here is ready to go for being a park. Very heavily wooded. And if we zoom in, it's also pretty intensely flowered. <laughs> Put in the trees in a slightly sparse layout and then come in hard with the flowers you'll get plenty of really interesting undergrowth there and it'll look fantastic. It's even better in noontime or the morning sun here because I wanted to shine a light on the park area that I've got developed over here. But before I get to that park area, I wanna talk about retention basins. This is a hillside here and lots of water will come running off. In urban areas, you need locations where there's no asphalt, where the natural vegetation is going to soak up rain runoff and keep the area from flooding. If I built this up 100%, rain would come off the side of the hill, rush down these streets, and could potentially swamp out the main boulevards in front of all these fancy buildings here. So having retention basins strategically placed in your neighborhoods gives a story that says, yeah, this is where the rain will collect. This is where it'll congregate and prevent the rest of the area from flooding out. The benefit of retention areas is that they provide areas of natural beauty. So here we've got just that, natural beauty. I've got these lovely trees, mostly green, but we've added in some reds and yellows and oranges. We've got a really nice colorful salad right here on these dry retention basins. And then I created a wet retention basin on this side, put a few weeds around the edges, make it look like, yeah, this is waterfront area. This particular piece of water, if we take a look, you can see it's rather flat. It, the water level of this will only go as high as you see illuminated area. It doesn't flood out this other area over here because there's this higher ground in between the two. So we're safe there. But keeping it low like that means it won't flood out. It's very stable over time and provides this nice puddle, this pond, that adds to the beauty of the area. What's that, little purple flowers? Yes, <laughs> drop them in, plant them in. They go very nicely with the yellows and you'll have some delicious looking urban salad around this area. I wanted it to be in front of these homes. I envisioned these homes as being, if not ultra expensive, at least moderately high end. Some condos, light living area, and they'd wanna be able to have something nice to look out on when they wake up in the morning. So here's a view from inside one of those condos. You see that big building and the trees in front of it. The olive tree is massive. It's pretty awesome here. I, I like waking up in this area. Nice and quiet. There's not a lot of traffic because it's residential here. This is a good place and these retention basins help out. So make sure you put retention basins in every so often in your town to give it that touch of realism and that touch of greenery that it needs to make the area beautiful. All right, let's go over here to the park. Why did I want the light shining on it? Because I've got Frank's Old Salt Fresh Fish Fish Sticks here. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> this comes from Larry Skylines. I love having a fish stick stand here at the basis of my park and it's right next to a metro outlet. And that's exactly where you want little eeries next to high traffic areas. Consider that in your planning. Don't just have metros right next to huge buildings. See if there's a way you can cram in restaurants or public spaces next to them to give a little more open area and to give options for your pedestrians to come in and have a snack, a bite to eat before they get on with their way. So let's take a look at the rest of this park down the roadway. We center ourselves. Here we are. Ah, wow. Before past the stop sign, there we are, the speed sign. We can see 
these tall buildings make a nice view on one side we've got the statue here on this side bike areas by the way spoiler alert we're told that there are no bikes in city skylines 2 at launch so yeah these bike lanes <laughs> these bike lanes are going to be one of a kind for a while if you need if you need to have bikes in your city you may be playing city skylines 1 for a while if you can live without bikes well then you might be able to enjoy skylines 2. all right well i've got plenty of bike paths here in my town so i am happy with this let's keep going we've got flowers along the side i've got more trees between this bike path and the tall buildings but more flowers between the bike path and the river and that's because i want it to be where people on the bike path would look out see this natural beauty and have a better chance of seeing the actual river not a bunch of woods i want it to be open a breathing space a fun space i want to have these little one by two or one by one umbrella eating areas off to the side there's no restaurant near here it's just a place for people to go and sit and enjoy the japanese park fits in nicely here remember this is a zonable road and i don't have the pedestrian area set up that's required in the dlc to do other stuff this is purely a zonable pedestrian road an old asset that still works well i've got stuff connected to it i don't have any commercial or office or residential hanging off of this road until we get to Frank's Fish Sticks or this Nathan's Hot Dog Stand, those are actual commercial areas. In this spot, this is not a commercial zone, this is a park I made that has all these tables and these various stands set up for, uh, call it the Taste of Little Italy Park. You come in, you enjoy, you sit down, you have something to eat. Underneath it, I placed the special event templates, so it will draw people in. These come in 4x4, 4x8, 4x12, and 4x16 sizes. Just lay them down in areas where you want lots of people to show up, and they will draw them in. Next to that, I've got the plaza, and I put in pools. Thank you, Sven Berlin for putting in these assets to the workshop. They are fantastic. This building here will snap to the road. The other areas, the pools the proper, will be free form buildings. Move them in any way you wish. Underneath them, I place these tiles to make it look like this is an area that was all tiled out. Without them, it would be kind of dirty. Yes, I know there's a little bulge there, but if I zoom out, ha, who's to notice? Pools are important, vital public spaces in your cities. Ever since public pools came to be, they have been sources of cultural exchange, cultural development, recreation, centers of the town. Put them generously in your city to give the people something to do and to know that you've done something right for the people of that area. Just as important as schools, police, fire, death care, health care, pools need to have a neighborhood focus because they define neighborhoods by the fact that they are gathering areas, meeting places. And yes, underneath these, I've also placed more of those gathering areas. So we're going to have lots of people flock to this part of town. I'm glad for that because I wanted this to be a public space that people would come to. I've got it developed out here with more parks attached to the area. I've got this area here with a beautiful, beautiful flower plaza as well as this unique paint coffee asset. <laughs> I love this one. It's perfect for a pedestrian area. They want to come in, get their coffee, have some color here that matches with the flowers. Sure thing, why not? This little stub path goes out here so you can walk all the way up to the edge of the key and look out on it and see the beautiful city. Obviously, I'm going to build more over here, but it's already beautiful right now. Follow along to the end. Do I have other things? Uh, not yet. I can always add more, though. I envision this path going underneath the road at this point here, right where it's highest. 
or rather whether it's bridge is highest, it'll sneak under here and follow along. Just as I had the pedestrian path go underneath this bridge, I did have it go up here because the way the pools were laid out, I didn't want to fudge with the key. It was already a straight line. I just thought, hey, make it go up, and now I've got an area where pedestrians can easily get up on the rise. Let's go up here. Oops, there we are. Look out. See some beautiful stuff and go, oh my, what a wonderful day this is. And then cycle down and head to the pool. So this whole area is going to be a wonderful pedestrian friendly zone. It's going to be so pedestrian friendly that I'm even considering adding a crosswalk at this point, but it won't hit this road. Now some of you may be thinking, ah, you'll do like they do in Europe and Asia, have it go over or under the road. And I'm thinking, no, I want it to do it like I've hardly ever seen it anywhere. Have the pedestrian path go straight on through and then have the road go up and over it. Or under it, whichever. But having the road move to make room for the pedestrians, I think is a great precedent for the city. I don't want it to be where the pedestrians have to make way for the cars. I want it to be where the cars make way for the pedestrians. I'll try to develop that theme as I build out. Next thing I want to talk about is the building style. Let's take a look at those tall, tall buildings here. I've tried to pick ones that have complementary styles with each other. These two come from the same developer and the same pack. They work very well. Over here, this building has got a similar kind of build to it. I, I'll keep it there. They go a little bit well with these here. What do I mean by a little bit well? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know yet. Well, they don't clash too much. There's obviously some differences. This is Spanish Mediterranean next to bauhaus -y modern. But the colors are not too different. The size and shape, the building heights are not too different. We have these short ones and then a tall tower. That's good. We've got plenty of room for these towers to breathe. Nice library there. I kept a similar style for all the villas up here in the hillas. This one's the one exception. But having one exception helps to make it where the others make sense. And then that one exception just starts to tell a story of its own. Why is it different? Well, make up your story at that point. <laughs> it's beautiful there. Oh, yes. Love all the salad. So the buildings I started with, they're still the tallest in this area. They're not the only tall buildings, but they are the tallest ones. They really do stand out with how everything else is here. The circle in this pattern, I wanted to replicate with a circular building here. And the hospital also has that circular element on top. I didn't plan it that way. I just noticed it now that, oh, wait, hey, I put another circle over here. <laughs> but those all go together. They make sense. Oh, got a circle there. All right, well, <laughs> the things you notice when you start looking at it again. All right, well, this is the Hilton Memphis Hotel. It's a nice asset in game. Shoved into it, I've got a few other things. I've got the Itobikoki? Itobikoki? I don't know how to pronounce that. So they have that Civic Center. This is made by uh, these JSF1. Beautiful Canadian assets. I have it shoved into the Memphis Hilton here. I used the Move It mod, placed it, and then scooched it over so the two are connected. Why do I want the two connected? Well, it's a convention center layout. I want it to be where people in the hotel and walk into this convention center or walk into this one and be just fine. That's how convention centers are designed. You just walk right into them. The parking lot. Let's zoom down here. Ah, I've got it rammed into the hotel proper as well as the convention center area down here. This way again, people can walk directly from their parking space to the hotel or to the convention center. Move it is your friend to make these hybrid buildings possible. On this side, we've got the Marriott from 
Warsaw, Poland, which also has a Bridgestone in there. The Marriott from Warsaw has this wonderful arcade at its base. Mixed use shopping, convention center, whatever I want to call it, that's here. Next to it, use a little bit of the Move It to get this area brought in, as well as this thing over here. The, oops, the Mississauga Civic Center. <laughs> now, why this one? Remember how I was talking about everything having the same pattern? And then you have that one building that goes, wait, what? This is it. Everything else kind of goes together. This one stands out. That, that rocket ship thing on top, red and green. There's a clash with the rest of the town. And I like it because now I've got a story here. People hate it. People love it. People write articles about this thing, how it shouldn't be there. It should be torn down. And others saying, no, celebrate it. It's our city's heritage. It's what's make us unique and stand out. I love that. I love that way that people can have different ideas and attitudes about a building simply because it clashes with everything else. That's what gives the city individuality. Again, on this side, I've got the parking lot where it will wedge into the Marriott, and it's a single building space there. I've also got the very back end here, just touching on it. Move It tool allowed me to connect them all together. For the hospital complex, once again, there's people who park at it and they will connect to the rooms up here. Lower levels can get out and walk up to the front over there. The last tip I want to talk about is editing the buildings using Rico. I've got the ploppable Rico Revisited mod that you see me selecting down here. And that allows me to click on a building, go here to the Rico settings, and do an add local to give my own settings for the building. Now, why did I decide there are 270 households in this building? I counted the floors, I figured how many rooms per floor there were, and that's how many are going to be living there. Could I be using some other other mod to do this automatically? Maybe. Am I using some other mod? No, I want to go and edit each building by hand because that's how I roll. Some I will leave completely alone, but others, well, we'll add that local. Adding a local setting will change it for all buildings of that type in your game, so do be careful and mindful of that. Having said that, being able to edit my buildings gives me lots of power within the game to control population and workspace availability, so I don't risk overbuilding or underbuilding a particular type. I could just go in and modify something to where it, it looks about right. For example, I've done that here with the Toronto City Hall. This is normally a unique building, but I've converted it into an office, and I've got 450 workspaces here. If I want to have different workspaces, well, I'll do a different edit with my Rico settings. If I want to keep the building as a unique building, then I've got another tool. I've got this building settings mod, and this allows me something similar to Rico, where I can specify an additional number of workspaces but it doesn't change the function of the building. It keeps it as a unique building. I find that the settings for this tend to be somewhat persistent across different installs, whereas Rico settings will be persistent across all my games. Sometimes when I use this building settings tool here, it will change some things and they stay the same, but like maintenance costs may reset when I load again. That's not just start a new city this would be load the city again and I may have to go back and change it if I want it to be at a certain level so let's recap we put in all the roads that are major We've got our major intersections defined they're not 90 degrees so we'll avoid complete grittiness I've got my park area set up I've got my beautiful pedestrian area here with fish stick stands and hot dog stands and other cool things we've got our retention basins we've got very similar styles of architecture to help define neighborhoods and then we've got those little standouts that help to make a story of the area. And finally, lots of delicious salad all over the place. That's a beautiful city in my view, and that means I've won the game so far. Hooray! Now to do some more work for next week. Until then, happy city building, all y'all.